follow the marquee and come to the Monday matinee. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. And welcome to Sonic Society, the world's largest showcase of modern audio theater. Every week we present new audio plays from around the English world. I'm Jack Ward. And I'm David Alt. Uh, now the next couple of weeks we're rather pressed for time in our introductions, are we, Jack? That is absolutely true, David. And we don't usually have the time to run multiple features back to back as we once did 13 years ago. But every once in a while there's an exception. And tonight and the next two weeks is one of those exceptions. But to be fair, this epic series sounds like a who's who of the latest phase of modern audio drama producers, writers, and actors. Written, directed, and music by Dane Leonardson, with script editing by Scott Phillips. And starring a literal score of actors. It's none other than Ancestry, book one, part one. And it all happens right here... On the Sonic Society. In the era before man, struggle befell the gods of old. Each of them held a measurable power, and with insatiable greed, they destroyed one another, until there were only two. Alokai, the last of the two, claimed his place with finality, and as the last, he became the first. Creation fell from Alokai portion of his endless power dividing itself amongst the realms. The first realm was that of Elysium, and in it were formed the Elysians, the great guardians of the realms. The second realm was that of Abyssia, and from it spills forth seduction, a power called the Draw that summons the hearts of those born free. With light, and only light, can the draw be quelled. For all those who cross into Abyssia are severed, never to return to Elysium again. And in order to divide the first two realms, a third was placed. A wilderness that cycles to the rhythm of time, from darkness to light from light to darkness. The grand and beauteous astral plane. Coach Studios is proud to present Ancestry, an epic fantasy audio drama set in a world of wonder. Book One, The Fall. Tarek, my beautiful daughter, we have waited a lifetime for this momentous hour. <sighs> I recall you as a child. When other girls your age danced and sang, you fought and howled like a soldier, pretending, wishing to be an Elysian. What others saw as oddity, I knew would prove to be strength. And now you may set aside your pretending. You can wish for more. For today, you become an Elysian. You've made us all proud, Tarek, but none more than I. May the draw never take you. May the draw never take you. Now, send us off with song. A chance for more is a chance enough to turn decisions past. May life preserve the second born and keep her in its grasp. The severing of violent nymphs kept her on the plains. The time has come to climb the hill and they see her to claim. The chance for more is chance enough to turn decisions past. May life preserve the second born and keep her in its grasp. The severing of violent nymphs kept her on the plains. The time has come to 
to climb the hill and she on the plane. Are you ready then, my child? Yes, father. You are going to do quite well, you know. These Elysians will struggle to keep up with you. I very much doubt that. The Elysians live to fight. True. They fight often, when it suits them. Then they return to hide behind their guarded walls. We do not choose our battles here and there. The battles come to us at random. You have strength on demand. There is much value in that. The barrier is just ahead. This is where we part. I will make you proud, Father. You've already made me proud, Tara. I love you. I love you back. I will sing for you every night. Now go. Claim your place. Become an Elysian. Halt! State your business. I am Tarek, daughter of Nef, here to claim my right as second boar. Hold here. Always at meal time. Coming. Yes, what is it? Another condor for you, Borgen. Is that so? What skills have you, girl? I'm a strong fighter, adept with spear, shield, and... Right, that's fine and good, but we've plenty of warriors here. I don't want to disappoint, but you'll be doing something less... illustrious, let's put it. Now, just tell me your practical skills, so we can move this along, eh? I... Oh, now, there must be something. I grew up fighting, sir. It's all I know that would be useful, besides riding horse. All right. If anyone asks, you're an excellent help in hand. You can clean a house, draw a bath, that sort of thing. I'm assigning you to be a ward, understand? I do. Thank you, sir. Well, don't thank me just yet. There are plenty of uh, uh, impatient lords to tend after. I see more wards fall to their masters than warriors on the battlefield. Now, you see that building over there with the blue banner? Yes. Go round to the other side of it. You'll see the stables on your left, and the building after that is the ward's quarter. Go there, and show them this. It'll get you a room there. Really, thank you very much for the kindness, Mr. Borgen. The least I could do. Wouldn't be right turning you away. I know how important this whole second-born business is to you, Lord. Just try not to be too obviously inept. Can you do that for me? Of course. Good. Now off with you. I owe me as a finish. I'm absolutely stunned that Marion tried to steal from us. She's been my ward for what seems like an eternity. <laughs> what can you expect, Mary? Just second born. It's very much a part of their nature. You will have to excuse Aaliyah. She has a rather strong opinion on this matter. Apparently. I find that such vile acts are committed by people in general, regardless of origin. Yes, well, we're all given the right to perspective. As long as said perspective is that of a pureborn, you mean. <sighs> Look, there is a reason why they live in the plains and we in the city. That's all I'm trying to convey. I am glad my parents acted honorably throughout their lives. Otherwise, it would be my name you tossed to the fire. Really, Nori? I think you were being unnecessarily dramatic. Yes, well, drama aside, I will be going to the quarter tomorrow to select a new ward. Oh, finding a new ward is, well, it's rarely a pleasant affair. Don't I know it? Took me long enough to find Marion. Well, let us hope for more expediency this time around. Now, 
I hate to dampen the mood even further, but there is a matter of some importance that I would like to discuss. Yes. You say this every time your cup runs dry, Mikal. <laughs> <laughs> if only the matter was so simple. No, Lucian. I'm afraid that my words can be taken quite literally this time. First, I would like to thank you all for your years of friendship. Without your support, I doubt I would have remained captain of the Plains Runners for such a long period of time. Which brings me to my point. I am getting old. Oh, look, you're not the only one. <laughs> Please, Aaliyah. Shh. You don't look a day, my elder. <sighs> I digress, dear husband. Forgive me. It's quite all right. As I said, I'm old now, and I wish to take on a role more suited for me. Perhaps a tactician or the likes. Bah! The greatest swordsman in a whole of existence, and you would be a tactician? <laughs> no, no, my friend. I shall name you Advisor of War. Advisor of War? Isn't that one of your titles? Come now, Mikal. Just accept for plain sake. Oh, yes. I mean, it's not as if you're some new recruit, love, is it? I mean, you were a plains runner before I even met you. <laughs> they speak the truth. You have earned this, old friend. Besides, I have plenty of titles to spare, being the right hand of the king. What I don't have is time to give each of my responsibilities the attention they deserve, so why not share? You will train the men, organize patrols, and most importantly, appoint a new captain. Knowing you, you already have someone in mind, do you not? Once again, it appears you know me all too well. This is a matter I've long pondered, and I do have my suggestion, though it's a somewhat difficult one to make. Oh? I suppose you're expecting me to nominate my eldest, Gadion. Strong, courageous, and the best swordsman I've ever sparred with. However... <sighs> his temper. So I'm not the only one who sees his liability? Yes, but let me be clear. He is a fine soldier, and you should be proud of him. It's just... While he himself might be able to weather the situations brought about by his anger, I fear the men he would lead might be the ones to fall prey to its consequences. Really, Lucian, what a brutish thing to say. This is their child you speak Look, of. We have known one another long enough to speak freely. I think that there really is it no It doesn't need. matter how long we've known each other. Some things are simply better left unsaid. No, he is correct, and has merely expressed what I myself know to be true. So then... If not Gadian, what of your boy, Ademus? What? Ademus? Yes, it's quite obvious in my mind. Well, how do you think Gadian will react to news such as this? Are you certain this is a wise choice? Gadian must learn to see past the wall that is his anger and identify the solutions that lie on the other side. It's for this very reason that I believe Ademus to be the logical choice. He has a good heart and a level head. He is courageous, but not foolhardy. And while he might be a lesser warrior, he would be a better leader. Ah, uh, I see. <sighs> Lucian? I'd wish for Ademus to be a bit older before taking on the burdens of command. But if you think him ready, I will support it. I do think him ready. Very well. How should we handle the promotion? Carefully. Yes. I will talk to Gadion after your departure. Speaking of which, it is getting rather late. Yes, Livian has tutoring at Light's Brig. I know this evening has ended on a bittersweet moment, but I really am looking forward to having you play a larger role by my side, Mikal. <laughs> I am honored that you would choose me for such a task. Now, let us speak no more of this. You would be the one bringing up the rear. But of course, with you in the lead, my path would be an easy one to follow. Come now. He's not that big. No, he's twice his size, and it's not like Ademus is small. He's average, if not above. I take after this magnificent brute over here. Yes, I thank you for your kind words pertaining to my large stature. <laughs> it's not like that, Doc. <laughs> Come, Seraph Clan. We've stayed far too late already. Thank you all for your hospitality, the Athronus family. It was enjoyable, as always. 
Later, Demas. Hey, Leo. You can put our plan to the test tomorrow. Show <laughs> off you and live. Keep it up with your music. You're getting quite good. Thank you, Gadian. Farewell. I'm surprised Haliel was able to leave with how strongly you two are attracted to one another. And I'm wondering how Ademus managed to shake you off his arm before he left. <laughs> Gadion, I wish to speak with you. Now? But it's so late. Yes, it can't wait, I'm afraid. Someone's in for a scolding. Enough, Tinara. Sit down, son. What's this about now? Well, here is the short of it. I'm getting old, Gadion. I can't keep on running the planes like I always have. It's time for a change. You're too young to just up and leave, surely. Lucian has decided to name me the advisor of war. You've been promoted? That's fantastic news, Da. You deserve it, you know. So I hear. Well, I'm really happy for you, Da, but I'm getting tired. That's and not if all. Gadion, I'm trying to tell you who the new captain will be. I didn't even think of that. Well, who is it going to be? Ademus. Ademus? I could best him in a fight if I was missing an arm! Listen to me, boy. Why? I have triple the kills in battle, I'm double the size, and I have four times the experience. Why? Your temper! I didn't make this decision lightly, and I don't want my choosing a Demas to make you feel as though I am somehow in disapproval of you. You are the finest soldier in our entire- If I'm such a fine soldier, then why appoint a Demas as captain? Because skill in battle and the ability to lead are two very separate things. Fine. Gadian. I understand, I, I do. But it doesn't make it sting any less. Oh, I love you, son. And I am proud of you. Don't let shortcomings keep you underfoot. We all have them. I was like you when I was your age, in fact. But I endeavored to learn from I, it. I understand what you're saying. I, I just need time to think on it. I, I need to sleep. I won't keep you any longer. I just wanted to tell you of the decision myself. So you didn't hear of it elsewhere. <sighs> Good night, Da. Good night, son. Excuse me? Sorry, we're closed. You'll have to come back tomorrow if it's a ward you're wanting. I'm to show you this. Ah, another fresh recruit. What's your speciality? Pardon? What can you do, Conda? I can tend to any needs that one might have. Cleaning, drawing bath water, things of that nature. Plenty of pureborn wards can draw a bath, Conda. You will need to do better than that. I can do anything that is required of me if I so wish to do it. And my name is Tarek, not Conda. Well, that may be your name, but a Conda is what you are. Call me a Conda again. Calm yourself, Tarek. Here, follow me. Thank you. You have strength, that I can tell. I'm sure Safira will find a use for you. I'll show you to your room. You'll want to be ready for an early start. Safira will want to give you a good looking over. And you don't want to keep her waiting. Hopefully she is more respectful than you. She is powerful in ways you cannot possibly imagine. If you would like to remain living, you will do what she says. Good night. Father! Tarek? You've come back! Give me a child. Oh, I have missed you. I'm coming, Father. What is this? Open the gates. Open the gates! Tarek, please, child. I must hold you for a while. I miss my sweet daughter. Father! What? She's coming, Conda. Get up. You will want to be ready for when she asks for you. <laughs> I do not have all day. 
People will start arriving at any minute. Where is this Terek? I'm sure she will be here shortly, madame. Ah, so this is the fearsome Conda that I have heard so much about. My name is Terek. You will refer to her grace as madame. Where I come from, respect is earned through kindness. Oh, Conda, what would your poor, pitiful father say? What would you know of my father? I know everything about everyone, and knowledge is the ultimate power, isn't it, child? Yes, it is. You see, contrary to what you are thinking, I really do love people. I find that with the right leash, they make for utterly devoted pets. I am not a pet of yours, old woman. You're right about that, child. See, I have yet to put on your leash. But that is why you stand before me now. I'm here to be a ward, nothing else. Hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. A group of guardsmen went out on a standard patrol. All was quiet, until suddenly a crazed Grigori attacked them at random. They had no choice but to kill him, of course. Poor thing didn't stand a chance. Neff. I believe was his name. How do you know my father's name? Who are you? I am the owner. You are the pet. Now, if you would like for that story to become reality, please continue with your oh-so-impressive resistance. And if I were to strike you down where you stand? You think me foolish? The story is already being written, child. The quill is in hand. And if anything were to happen to me... Well, let's just say I've already told my pets how the story ends. Now, if you do not stop this charade, I will kill your father, your entire blasted village, for all I care. Little girl, you are nothing. I have hundreds of pets much prettier than you. Well, Conda? See, the leash isn't so bad once it's on. Some even grow to find it quite comfortable. Now, sit over there with the others and keep quiet. Lasted longer than any I've seen, Condor. All the good it did her. Still, I thought it was impressive. Don't worry. She gets us all in the end. Quiet, you. Nari Thronis, I've been expecting your visit. Madame Safira, always a pleasure. I am sorry to hear of what happened with Marion. I assure you that she is being dealt with harshly. It truly is a shame. Well, no need to dwell on that now. Let us begin your selection process, yes? Yes, let's. I'm hoping that you have someone special in mind. I have many that I believe would suit your purposes. Paldira, come here, child. As you can see, she is pure blood, very beautiful and respectful, mind you. Do you have any knowledge of the plains, Paldira? No, my lady. I've been within the walls my entire life. Can you ride? No, my lady. I was taught that it's improper for a lady to ride a horse, at least without a carriage attached. Well, I guess that makes me improper. Ignorant child, you have insulted her. No, she has a valid point. Many do believe it is improper for a lady to ride. But I'm afraid I'm looking for a ward that has a bit more experience on the plains. Perhaps a second-born? But, milady, surely a woman of your stature would prefer a ward with pure lineage, especially after what happened with your last one. I care little about lineage. Now, have you any second-born? Well, there is one, but she has only just arrived. Untrained. You see. Well, I would very much like to meet her. Of course. Tarek, come. Tell me, Tarek, can you ride? With skill, milady. And you know the plains? Of course, milady. I have hunted them my entire life. Well, how would you like to become my ward? You are asking me? <laughs> what else would I do? You are a free Elysian, not a slave. Now, would you like to work for me, Tarek? I... I would. Excellent. I can wait for you to gather your belongings. I have a carriage out front. 
I have all of my belongings with me, milady. But what about spare clothes? I have only these. Well, we will have to change that. I assume that our previous discussed price will be acceptable, Safira? Of course. But, milady, are you certain that you would choose her? Yes, madame. She's the one. As the lady wishes. As for you, Tarek, Lady Nari has given you a gift. You should be thankful. I am thankful, madame. Oh, and Tarek. Yes, madame. You will come back for a visit, won't you? We still need to figure out how our little story will end. We will see. Very well, we should be going. Thank you, Safira. May the draw never take you. Nor you, milady. The carriage is right this way. Would you like for me to take the reins, milady? That would be fine. And please stop calling me milady. Call me Nari. Yes, Nari. And don't go saying my name after everything either. Just behave naturally. I will try my best. Nari, please! What's wrong, child? My father! He needs light! Tarek, do you have light with you? Yes, I do. Show us, boy. Come on! Taken by the draw, fool man. I, I thought, I thought I had more time. There is I, plenty of light to be had. Do you realize what you've done? Look around you. You have destroyed half of your belongings, and for what? Please, forgive me. Don't ask for my forgiveness. Look at your eldest. He bleeds from your trashing about. Do you not realize that this affects all those around you? Would you have your sons grow up to be an idiot like yourself? Please, he's been through enough. No, he has not. Tell me, who do families seek out when this happens? Hmm? When men think themselves strong enough to at last to draw? Me. And so it is I who will say when he has been through enough. Tell me, fool. Will you allow for this to happen again? No, no. I, I vow in Alakai's name. This will never happen again. Be sure that it doesn't. And... May the draw never take you. Nor you. Bless you, Nari. Bless you. Come along, Tarek. At your heel. You were quite harsh. He earned every word. It is men like him that cause such needless heartbreak. Such avoidable peril. Yet still they embrace it willingly. Here, into the carriage. That is the part I struggle to understand the most. Light is freely available to all in the city, so why did he not light cleanse? There is an unspoken game among men. Not all men, mind you, just foolhardy ones. They think themselves to somehow be stronger if they resist a draw of their own accord. But as you can see, eventually there is none of that man left to resist. The draw will overcome any and all fools who would avoid cleansing. I see. We shall stop at the great library to retrieve Livian. And who is Livian? My youngest daughter. She is training to be a keeper as you speak. Our time of study has come to end. You may all take leave. Livian, I wish to speak with you. Yes, Ofani? You have impressed me, Livian. You already have vast knowledge in poetry and song verse. You understand why we record keep using these methods. You are a natural. For this reason, I name you my apprentice. You're... you are serious? I will work tirelessly, Lady Ofani. I, I will study wherever I may be. <laughs> you already do those things. Otherwise, I would not have chosen you. Know that your mind will be strained to an even greater extent under my tutelage. I will ask much of you. Do you still wish to accept? But of course, milady, you honor me. Very well. Your first task will be to choose a subject in which you desire to study. Any subject? That hardly seems like a task. Any subject available here in the keep, yes. 
you are allowed this privilege to alleviate the weight of your workload. An eager mind is a sharp mind. Whenever I feel that you are beginning to reach your limit, we can switch to the subject you wish to explore. You do not need to decide now. Feel free to think on this for a time. I do not need time to think. I know what I wish to study. <laughs> I might have known. What is it? My mother speaks often of my father and Mikal. Their long friendship, but no one will ever tell me the exact details. I wish to learn of these events. There could very well be a reason for their secrecy. You will not allow it, then? I will not forbid you. I just urge you to be cautious. I understand. May I begin? Yes, you may. I'll just gather a few books that will no doubt pique your interest. Did you know from my father during these tales? I was the one to pen them in the first place. They have always been close acquaintances of mine. Good men and fine Elysians they are. This book will be a good place to start. This is the tale of Oxim. What does this Oxim have to do with my father? You will know soon enough. Here lies the story of Oxim, as written by the Keeper. The siblings five were friends before, the falling out of twins. For two were made together bound, and one held hate within. So Oxim, eldest of the five, began to plot a trap. For as long as the hateful grew, the world would soon collapse. Paris on Forina! What are you doing? You have spilled enough blood. No more. Brother! We are bound together as one! You fool! Well, if you do this, we both shall perish! Do it, Oxen! He must be stopped! Forgive me, dear sister. No! Baldo! Oxum, what? Where have they gone? My sister. I, I do not wish to witness such tragedy. I am sorry you had to bear witness to this. Uh, have you killed them? No. They are here, within these two metals. Listen closely. I have brought you here for a purpose. You are the only messenger in which I will place my trust. You must bring this metal to Alokai and Alokai alone. He will know what it is. What of the other metal? I must take it somewhere far from here. Now go. And so the twins were bound within, the metal split between. The one in half was buried deep, the other brought to King. My father was a messenger? Everyone must earn their rank somehow. Pardon my interruption. I was told that Livian could be found here? I am Livian. You are? I am Tarek, your mother's new ward. She awaits with the carriage outside. May I be excused, Lady Ofani? Of course. We can continue the story later. Give your family my good wishes. I will do so. Farewell. So you are the new ward. It is good to meet you. It is good to meet you as well. How goes your training? It really is wonderful. I have been named the apprentice to Afani herself. Did I just hear you correctly? Yes, Mother. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, it is. I'm so very proud of you. Just wait until Father finds out. Well, get in the carriage, you two, and we can tell him. So, Terak, I couldn't help but notice your abundance of weaponry. You were a warrior on the plains? Not exactly. Though I suppose by Elysian standards we were all warriors in a way. Never knew what the dark cycle would bring. Go left here. Uh, did you enjoy living on the plains? Very much so. I'm going to miss the hunting, the adventure, my father. Your father? What is he like? Very strong. With a kind heart. And does this kind-hearted fellow have a name? Nephilokolo. But most call him Neph. Your father is Neph? You have heard of him? He's said to be a mighty warrior. Mikal, the, the captain, he speaks very highly of him. Ah, <laughs> yes, Mikal. 
My father speaks favorably of him as well. I must say you speak very properly for a second born. My father stressed the importance of speech. He claims that his well-spoken nature is one of the only reasons the Grigori consider him their king. Well, it will be nice to have a ward capable of holding decent conversation. My last was less than eloquent. And she was second born? Yes, she was. Then it is to be expected. My people have little time for learning. They have a hard enough time remaining alive. So it really is that dangerous in the plains. I thought that perhaps the stories I have heard were embellished. They very well could have been, but it is still dangerous nonetheless. Here we are, our home. This building is your home? Yes, but why? This could shelter the entire Grigori village. <laughs> well, now you may call it home. Hello? Mother? You've returned already? Yes, and I would like to introduce Terek, my new ward. It is good to meet you. I'm Haliel. Mother, shall we show Terek her room? Yes, that would be just fine, but where is everyone? Father and Ademus are in the study getting ready for the ceremony. <laughs> Come, Terek. Livian and I will show you around. There are my two handsome men. Oh, hello, Mother. My goodness, that uniform is absolutely stunning. Tanara will surely be smitten, if she isn't already. Smitten? Do you really think so? Just when I had the boy focused. You just had to brain up Tanara. You know, Lucian, I used to distract you in the same way. You are, and will forever be, my only distraction, dear wife. Please stop. <laughs> <clears throat> I believe it's time to depart. We shall see you there, my wife. Ademus? After you, father. Please! Don't get the roots! I gave you all that I have! I am running out. My animals need... Please! Ah! Tell me, where do I find more? I... I can't! As you wish. Ah! I will cut every root. I will break every branch. <laughs> what? Wuxim knows where to find it. <laughs> Oxen. I hope you have been truthful. If not, I will return. I promise! Go on. I really do hope that Gaddy does not resent me for this. Uh, can I turn down the promotion? Listen to me, son. I know that Gaddy in his short of temper intends to overreact. But you must. Ademus! Oh no. Stop right there, Ademus. How dare you? Gadian, calm yourself, boy. Oh no, I will not. You think to prance down here, Ademus, in your fancy clothes and just take the title of captain, become the leader of the Plains Runners? I think you'll do a fine job. Oh, <laughs> by the planes, guys. Just look at you. Hand on your sword and all. You are by far the most horrible person I have ever met. And you've met my sister? Yes, but she's pretty at least. You take captain from me and call me ugly? And I'm the horrible one. Gadian. <laughs> I'm only having some fun. You really will make a great captain. You'll have me behind you after all. Gadian. Where is your father? Already on the terrace. Waiting on you two, I believe. Oh, go on with you. You're a good friend, Gat. Come, Ademus. His Highness, the right hand of the king, Lucian! Plains runners! We gather here today to honor your captain. Mikal has been a noble and fearless leader. For that, he deserves your salute. For his dedication and resolve, I now name him advisor of war. He will now be the supreme combat authority to which you all will answer. For this, 
He deserves your salute. I now give him the terrace, for he also has a word for you. Mikal. Plains runners, I stand before you as advisor of war, and my first duty is that of a saint. I, Mikal, name Ademus, son of Lucian, captain of the plains. For this, he deserves your salute. Salute! I give Captain Ademus the terrace, as he will now lead us in the call. Plains runners, who? Remedy! Shokunde, remedy! Shokunde, ya! Shokunde, ya! You did well, son. <laughs> Your father is right. It was indeed a very fine call. You both have my thanks. Now, shall we eat? You didn't tell him of tradition? I thought he already knew of it. Uh, what tradition do you speak of, Mikhail? When one becomes captain, they are to abstain from sustenance of any kind for three whole cycles. Three whole cycles? Well, yes, of course. It represents the resolve one must have when taking a position of leadership. I... <laughs> Again! <laughs> Go on and get yourself something to eat, Captain. <laughs> Gadian gave him a similar scare earlier on. I see he gets it honestly. <laughs> well, at least we know for certain your nerves will be ready. Lord Mikal. Yes, Lair. I've been sent with news from the plane. It's quite urgent, I'm afraid. Very well. I'm listening. There have been attacks on the Grigori village, sir. Many, in fact. This is hardly news. There is rarely a dark cycle that passes without incident. These particular attacks are happening during light cycles, my lord. What? Yes, sir. They've had several incidents. Impossible. This has never happened in all my time. I merely repeat what I've been told, my lord. This is... unheard of. If what you say is true, this will mean that we will have to double our patrols. Ensuring that we had men enough to run during Dark Cycle was taxing enough. What if we were to find out what was causing this and deal with it directly? Go on. You said yourself that this has not happened before. Does that not mean something has changed? Perhaps there is something the Gregoria are doing to induce these aggressions. Uh, maybe even something in a nearby water source that influences the wildlife in such a way. I suppose it to be possible. We had better investigate regardless. This will make a good first task for our captain. Ademus, how would you proceed? It is obvious we should send out patrols immediately to prevent further attacks. Good. And? The smaller the group, the faster they can travel, so... I would lead a small party out to the areas of attack. There we could scrutinize the surrounding area, and hopefully gain some insight. An excellent plan! You see, Lucian, this is the type of reasoning that will make the boy an impeccable captain. Indeed. Ademus, gather those that you would bring with you and prepare to ride. Unfortunately, this affair requires immediate action. We must protect the Grigori. Yes, Lord Macau. Lair. Yes, Captain? Send for Helio. Tell her to meet me at the armory and to bring her horse. Yes, sir. There's my captain. Where's Lair off to? Ready yourself for the planes. What? There are attacks happening as we speak. During light cycle? Yes, thus the need for haste. I'm on your heel, captain. Do we have any idea as to what's happening? No, we only know that there have been several unusual incidents. Are you certain you aren't angry over this entire situation? I'm sure there are many that expected the title to fall to you. You are the better warrior. When my father first told me of his intention to name you, I'll admit that I was heated. Enraged, in fact, but... After thinking it over, I started to see the truth, clear as light. He was right to choose you. You have control over yourself, that's something I've never known. You can have that same control. You think that I don't get angry. I do. I promise you that. 
but when the time comes to react, I ask myself, will lashing out in anger really improve this outcome, or do I need to let go and focus on a more sound solution? The only thing you need to learn to do is let go. <laughs> you make that sound as though the task is a simple one. It is not. I came as soon as I was able. What is happening? There have been attacks on the plains. I will explain more on the way. The horses have been made ready outside. Good. To the plains. Stay behind me and alert me if anything is out of order. Your playing is lovely, Livian. Thank you. Have you heard this melody before? I do not believe so. Would you like to hear the tale? I would be delighted. It's about the draw. Pulling on my heart, I feel it start to rise. Calling me to dark and eternal demise. The severing is sure, my firmness wearing thin. Oh, Alakai, I pray for strength within. Oh, Alakai, I pray for strength within. That was beautiful, Livian. It is no wonder you were chosen to be your fanny's apprentice. Did you write that? Goodness, no. That was written long before I ever existed. All right. The carriage is ready for us out front. Let's make our way. Certainly. Tarek. Take the reins, would you? Of course. Have you gathered light before, Tarek? No, I have not. Is it difficult? The hard work is already done. Every few light cycles, we set out containers among the plains. Inside of these containers, we put a certain soil type that will attract lumen beetles. The lumen beetles become entrapped due to a plant that is mixed within the soil. The plant renders the beetles unable to move, but keeps them alive so they will not lose their light. We come along and collect the containers, then return home to cook the beetles. Cook them? Yes, we boil them. You see, the light binds itself to the steam put off by the water, so we have containers ready above to recapture the moisture. These containers are then heated, and the remaining water eventually evaporates, leaving behind pure light. I had no idea this process was so involved. Did you have light in your village, Terry? Yes. My father would make sure that I was properly light cleansed daily. He would hunt all day, return home, make pelts out of his kills, and trade them for light with the plains runners. Honestly, I can say that I've never actually felt the draw. It is good that your father valued light cleansing so. You might not be here otherwise. Yes, I agree. He knew firsthand of its importance. So, your father was taken by the draw then? Livian, you should never ask such things. It's fine. I take no offense. Yes, he was. See, my father's family was poor. My grandfather was a donkey merchant, back before horses were so affordable. Soon no one wanted donkeys anymore. Wagons, carriages like this one, put him out of business. I'm guessing this was during the era of paid light. Yes. Back when light was sold and not given freely by the court, my father's family eventually lost everything. And without wealth, there was no light. And without light... They were taken... To the draw. Yes. If this is making you uncomfortable, just say so, Tarek. It all happened before I was living, and I actually enjoyed our life on the plains, so I really don't mind. Here we are. Let's start gathering them. What am I to gather? I see nothing. These. Those are the containers? There must be thousands of them. How are we to accomplish this? Why do you think I require wort? This cycle we collect, next cycle we cook, and the third we bring the containers back here and plant them. It's no small task. Well, then, no time to waste. And that's this week's show. Please join us next week as we continue with Ancestry. Can't wait and have a listen for Thursday's special episode on the feed of Sonic Echo Season 2 Episode 1. Until then, I'm Jack Ward. And I'm David Alt. Good night.
Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. If you produce audio dramas, it obviously isn't to become rich and famous. You love the medium, and you want to share your passion for theater of the mind. The Mutual Audio Drama Network is looking for you. Mutual presents audio dramas every day of the week, each with its own genre. Mystery, sci-fi, comedy, horror, all reaches of the imagination. It doesn't matter if you produced your shows years ago or are still cranking them out. Share them on the world's largest collection of modern audio drama and audio fiction. Give a listen at MutualAudioNetwork.com. And if you'd like to be a part of the excitement, with free access to all sorts of voices, sound effects, music, and more, just drop a line to mutualaudio at gmail.com. The Mutual Audio Drama Network. Why not join us today?